<laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to Sunday Tea Book 2021. 2021. Oh my gosh, wow. Uh, so, this is the first Sunday Tea Book of 2021. And our first video as well. And our first video of 2021. Happy and the, New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Hey, Igor, Happy New Year. Hello. And the 27th, which I still am flabbergasted, cannot believe that it's the 27th episode of Sunday Tea Book. This has been such an enriching, fun experience for us, mm -hmm. Jen and I, and hopefully for you guys. Wow, new intro music. Yeah, I hope you <laughs> like the new intro music. I was so stoked today to hit that new intro music. Is and it? Do you like it? Is it too badass? It's a little <laughs> bit badass, I know. Is it badass? I think it's badass. Is that bass just churning? <clears throat> Sorry, Instagram, you missed it. Anyway, um, right. And with a little tw uh, twist in the name, as the old uh, intro yes. video was, you ain't no help. This one is you're a big help. You're a big help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If because you, you guys can't see the name, so the intro right. music, the tradition. Yeah, that's right. So I changed the name to you're a big help because I thought it was fun. Anyway, mm -hmm. give me wow. a hello, Simerji on uh, Instagram. Hey, Simerji and, and uh, Alina, Alina Fialho. Welcome, Happy New Year, slash oh slash. I'm such a, I'm not good with those. I don't know. I guess it means like whoop, whoop. I'm not sure. I don't know, like angled. I don't know. Angled. Slash O. Um, so JS, hey, welcome on the YouTube side at Random Designs. Welcome to the uh, stream and to give you a wave right back. So guys, let us know what is in your cup mm -hmm. uh, today as we warm up for Sunday Tea Book. We've got a great first uh, live of 2021 lined up for you, including some trivia. Oh yeah, there will yes, be some tea trivia to warm us up. And Should black tea. Know. Black tea is our topic today. Mm -hmm. So um, we're making our way through the book. Uh, what are we, what's in our, what are we brewing? You're the tea setup girl. I'm the tech guy, she's the tea girl. Yes, we're gonna have some uh uh, Tao Hua Hong today is a black tea from Anhui province mm. for the Instagram. Have you done anything for YouTube? YouTube? Yeah, usually you just believe. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. I'll show you guys on YouTube. Instagram people, you should fly over to YouTube as soon as possible. I'll tell you more why, not just because I'm gonna show a wonderful montage of the website. So you can see the tea there on the website there, YouTube folks, <laughs> people on Instagram, there's the uh, close up there. There's the zoom in of the pictures. You see the dry leaf, you see the liquor color and the brood leaf. Those are three essential things you really need to know about any tea you're gonna buy. We do that because it's a website, right? So it's the best we can do. Also, we've got a quick description at the top. Scroll down a little bit, pop that open, you'll get the full description about the tea. Um, under there, you've got even more details about the origin and whatnot. And there's space for you guys. If you've tried the tea, please leave us a review. We would love to hear your impression of the tea there. There you can see the gal in Nova left us a review there for that tea. So uh, dive on over. Grab some of this fantastic black tea for yourself. I'm pretty excited because it's been a long time mm. since we have sipped uh, Monsieur Tao Hua Hom. I'm big on the Kimen, the Kimen Trad. Our traditional Kimen is one of my favorite uh, breakfast teas. The Dian Hom we dip into every now and then. For some reason, the Tao Hua Hom, which is a really, maybe because it's kind of, we, I don't know if you guys do this too. Let us know in the comments or the chat or whatever if you tend to do this, but I, with the fancy teas, we tend to like revere them instead of enjoy them. Yeah. So that kind of yeah. reach into that category a little bit. Um, <laughs> hey, time signature MMA. Holy delay, I'm late. Well, not too late, you're just on time. We have not really warmed up. Just let us know what's in your cup. We just went over what we're brewing. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry, you wanted to say something. I'm, I'm kind I of- forgot. I forgot. I love, I love what you're talking. It will come back to me and I will just sure. randomly interrupt you, okay? So We've yeah, got, yeah. <laughs> so basically I'm gonna give us the, uh, what is Sunday Tea Book? I see a lot of the Tea Tribe is, is signing into the YouTube. We've got some uh, new folks on Instagram. So what is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where, it's an idea that you guys out in the live world came up with, where we take a book, an article or paper that is full of great information, but is not available in English or it's dubiously translated. And we go over it and share that information with you, making any correction to the translation or exposing what the original Chinese text says. Mm -hmm. We originally thought, man, this is gonna, I thought, this is gonna be a little bit dry. How do we get this exciting? And- well, you um, come up with the tea trivia. Yeah, <laughs> the tea exciting. trivia, the tea <laughs> trivia helped a little bit, but actually before we, long before we came up with tea trivia, once we got into this, we realized this is really, uh, 
this is kind of like letting you guys out there go through everything I went through between 2014 and now as I sort of speed learned about Chinese tea from Jen and uh, that's what this is. Getting into the details of why a certain word is used and why a certain confusion exists is, is extremely insightful and it goes beyond just clearing that confusion. It actually gives you the tools to understand other confusions that could arise with Chinese tea. It gives you the a better ability to understand which will trickle down to appraisal and appreciation mm -hmm. and enjoyment I fundamentally. I think the, uh, more exci uh, the excitement of this is that everybody is learning. It's not oh, yeah. just uh, the audience in front of yeah, the us uh, computer. Us, mm. we're learning too. It's rich. It ta touches on tea knowledge. It touches on those uh, cultural differences, uh, language oh, yeah. and stuff. And sometimes it's a great and I love how an um, open discussion that oh. we have going on on YouTube and um, it's really a place that sometimes you can ask a questions and you might be too shy or feel like uh, mm. uh, not sure if it's the right question to ask when you're with people in a tea store or stuff. Right. It's, just I just blurt it out with us. Is, yeah. Just blurt it kind of out. Thing. There's no questions that are bad. You know, if you're just getting started and you have a question like what is oolong? Just ask. We'll give you the, the sort of 25 cent version and we'll point you to where you can get more information. I saw somebody here on the Instagram side is drinking uh, at random signs is uh, at random design, sorry, is drinking pineapple green bubble tea with green tea jelly. So Ooh. I was immediately jealous. I was like, oh man, that sounds so good. That sounds so good. And Elena gave, gave you props because the website is looking amazing, by the way. So. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much for that. We really appreciate the encouragement there. Laura Possobam, Possobam, welcome to the uh, Instagram side. So, we're continuing today with uh, China Tea. It's a book uh, about the China, oh sorry. Uh, it's a book about Chinese uh, tea and uh, tea culture written by my mom, Jenny Wu. And it really literally, what are you doing? I'm just goofing around. <laughs> so it really literally touches on every detail, mm. every aspect of Chinese tea, providing you with a little knowledge about Chinese tea from the Chinese perspective. Mm. So that is very fun. And for us, for me personally, I'm learning a lot of a, a translation or tea terms or how mm. you guys have been heard about certain tea terms, kind of a... Yes. Uh, uh, information collecting process for me too. Very yeah. helpful so for my English and my tea translation work. And mm -hmm. um, uh, for you guys, see whether you're just uh, starting on tea or have been in the Chinese tea world for quite a while, is a great chance to, you know, organizing the knowledge a little mm. bit, the information a little bit, and uh, clarify a certain uh, confusions and. Um, uh, kind of ba baseline our terminology too so we may have different words for different things right. we can kind of figure out how we'll talk so to we can avoid confusion yes and today we're gonna continue on a black tea red tea hong cha session mm. which is a really fun one of the most popular one of the most popular tea in the world mm. and uh, one of the most uh, misunderstood tea mm. by a lot of people Absolutely. there's a lot of the stigma because it's the most common tea bag tea, so yeah, so very interesting, I think. So I'm super excited to dive into that. On the Instagram side, I'm gonna let you guys know how we do this is we pull the book right up on the screen, but we can only do that on YouTube. So if you wanna follow along, hop over to YouTube, jump on to our live stream on YouTube. I'm gonna pull it right up on the screen. I'll read the section of the black tea that we're going over today, kind of paragraph by paragraph. We'll unpack it together. I'll give you, I read it out of the book. The translation's quite chunky, and then we will, uh, unpack it, go over it. If anything's missed, we'll find out from Jen what was kind of completely lost. This is where it gets fun and where you guys help us out a lot. Sometimes we struggle with how to translate those really detailed or those nuanced terms and we've got lots of help from you guys and we'd love if, if you guys could keep that up. It's super fun. And so yeah, Instagram, jump on over to YouTube. I'm gonna sign out there. Do you mind switch my oh, camera to the brew cam? Not at all, not much. at all. We'll switch over to Thank the brew cam you. on the YouTube side. Also, jump Thank on you. to our Help website. Focus no. here. Nice job. The link down below, there's a finished translation too. So right. bye, bye Instagram, we'll see you on the YouTube side. So don't forget to uh, go to the finished translation. As today there is uh, some of the Chinese pinyin that I kept and uh, wasn't uh, uh, it wasn't fully translated. 
as I found uh, it could be a little bit uh, hard. Actually, it was a little bit hard for me to translate a certain you know, mm, two times. Right, I stuff. remember hearing some words coming from the other side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'll zoom in there so they can get a good look at the prep. I wanted to notice there was a few comments on YouTube, super exciting. Um, JS is going to switch to Lapsung in a bit after he makes some lunch. So there's some black tea roll in there. I love how you guys follow along with the theme and really fun for us. Did you see that puff of a tea fuzz? Hey, yo, nice. <laughs> Very nice. Flying tea signature point. is delayed. Um, J uh, d everybody know there's no such thing as late, the Sunday tea book. Simmerjeet says he's brewing Dian Home today, which yes. is also on the black tea theme. Very excellent. And uh, Time Signature's got some herbal tea going. Awesome. And Brumo Palm... <laughs> Hello, Mara. Welcome to the stream. I oh, thank you. I really love this. enjoying that aroma after a warmed up guy one. It Black really tea is especially so lovely, right? That sort mm. of uh, berry-ish, berry sort of freshly baked cookie kind mm. of sweet, really lovely. It's like mm. a subdued a toast flavor. I think like mm. the berry is not a pure, just a sweet. It mm. has that dry. It's not already uh, sweet, that dry yeah. toastiness. That yeah, there's that bit of roasty like toasty in there. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. So, guys, while we get our tea rolling, I am going to jump over to... You know what time it is, don't you? What time is it? Give me a shout out. It is... I'm going to wait till you pour so you can participate. Okay. Okay. Tea! Trivia! Time. time that's right folks we're gonna warm up this is where we do a little trivia just to kind of warm up into the live there's no wrong answers um there are right answers i was gonna say there's no right answers but that's <laughs> so totally ridiculous of course there's right answers but there's no wrong answers take a guess there's no it's no big deal we're just having fun kind of warm up i pick some fun questions in our big trivia bonanza, which was part of our holiday special series, you can still check that out mm -hmm. um, in our, it's published now, I think, or it will be soon. We did a trivia bonanza. We introduced new style of questions. We got some of those here today. Are there new ones here? I brought, I kept oh. some, yeah. So let's get on Any with it. Any preference in cups here? I'm gonna have the blue one. Thank mm -hmm. you for asking. I saw that way. I saw that way. If you've been following us for a while, you know that um, I'm a little bit excessively picky sometimes about which one is quote unquote my cup. It's not really my cup, but I have this this sort of obsessive uh, need to claim this this blue cup is my cup. Anyway, I won't show you, but. I'll show you later. I'll show you later. Okay, calm okay, down. I won't show you. <laughs> question one. Question one. I just want to get on with the questions. Okay, okay. What Let's does, do what does, this is a bit of an ironic uh -huh. first question, but what does CTC stand for? Is it A, cut, tear, curl? Is it B, cook, tumble, crimp? C, crush, tear, curl? Or D, tom, tao, cai? What? So what have we got? So Cindy got here just in time for oh, tea perfect. trivia. Awesome timing, Cindy. You have got great timing. JS yell out hype. I love that. I think that's got to mm. be one of our emojis in uh, in Discord. And uh, Igor say, yay, Cindy. Hello. Uh, the Bonanza was so much fun. I'm glad you guys liked it. We had a blast too. We love tea trivia. Cindy, late to arrive, first to come out with an answer to what does CTC stand for? Is it A, cut, tear, curl? B, cook, tumble, crimp. C, crushed hair curl. Or D, tom, tao, tai. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Everybody's going with A. Ooh. Making me nervous a little bit. But anyway, as far as I know, yeah. as far as I know, the right answer is actually C, the Charlie Brown answer, crush, which is part of the uh, process. I don't know. You guys can Google it if I'm wrong. Again, no big deal. It's also possible for me to be wrong, but my understanding is that it is C, crushed hair curl. Um, but I've heard people say cut hair curl a, a lot more than once. Uh, so Simrajit throw down an A, but then he quickly came back with a C. On to question number two. This is the... I couldn't have italics, so I went with all caps. Okay. This is the distinguishing feature of black tea. Is it A, red liquor? B, made for export? C, fully oxidized? Or D, rich in catechins? Okay, folks. 
This is the distinguishing feature of black tea. <laughs> Cindy is excited. She learned something already. I'm not, what a useful tea trivia right? you have. I try to balance the tea trivia between the, the goofy, goofy fun with a little sprinkling of, uh, of sometimes knowledge. Somebody says A and C. I assume that's somebody. Sorry, time signature MMA. Time signature MMA. Okay. Let, me ask, let me ask you, is that mixed martial arts? I've been wondering that ever since she popped into the stream. Huh? Why? Ta I don't know. But uh, it could be... Oh, MMA. Okay, yeah, okay. MMA. But it could be like their initials or something. I don't know. Mm. Uh, Jesus. Hey, welcome to the stream, Jesus Estebanes. Emphasize uh, on C, C, He says C, C, it's C, 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 C. And Alina Fialho de Mello. Hey, welcome everybody. A whole bunch of people popping into the stream. Simmerjeet goes with C. Mm. C, a bunch of C's have just streamed in here. Michelle Shestak, welcome to the stream again. A bunch of C. The answer is indeed C. I can't say that A and C is wrong. Red liquor is a distinguishing feature of black tea, mm -hmm. as is B, as is D. These are all, f these are all applicable to black tea, mm -hmm. but you know, the right answer I was quote unquote looking for is the one that sort of separates it from the other teas is that it is right. fully oxidized. So that's mm -hmm. where I went for. Mm -hmm. Not quite D though. Not tannins. C, not tannins? Not quite D. Oh, not quite D. Oh, oxidized. Okay. Oh, right. Or transferring to right, other right. stuff. Transfer. Trans Sorry, not D. A, Trans B, and C. Transform. Transform, yes. Okay, here's question number four, folks. Black tea was invented in, is it A, 1492? I just realized I have to remember the answer to this. B, 1501, C, 1766, or is it D, 1590? Black Ooh. tea was invented in which year? A, 1492, B, 1501, C, 1766, or D, 1590? I'm gonna take a deep sip of my tea now. <sighs> And Alina. Igor is going with C with the shrug of his shoulders. I'm flush in brewing this tea because there are two of us and we're talking a lot. Mm. So we put extra leaves. I think you put like a four grams. Four grams, and this is our mini uh, guy one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus! I, I thought this is the oh, camera. Oh. But yeah, no, let me it's show okay. it. It's okay, just leave that page. I would just show this is our regular, like a 90 mil. 80, yeah, it's 80. actually pretty small. You're Seven, right. 75, 80. Uh, so I it... like to call that perfect size. <laughs> guy one. It's for a really me, nice guy Especially one. for like a, a lot of ladies' hands, it wouldn't mm. be too big. I think this is a great and um, versatile size. Yeah, great for a pair too, like it's one a nice size. One of my favorite mm. uh, guy one size. And, um, if you're doing like a little bit intensive in terms of the leaf, as you probably could see by the expansion, usually you don't put so much leaf in <laughs> black tea, but anyways, uh, it's good. Um, just make sure you brew faster, but if you are brewing with more regular amount of uh, black tea leaves, so you can let it sit a much longer. Mm. Oh. oh, that's like a sweet potato kind of. Oh, that's so sweet. A little starchy though. I, I love like that. A, that really cheerful fruit mm. is there. Yes, yes, a cheery sweet. So yeah. the answers coming in are Igor guessing C. I think I said that. Cindy comes out with a D question mark. Mm -hmm. Bruna C question mark. Hey guys, I love that you're guessing. I think that's that's what this is all about. If you I don't, don't even know this. If you don't know, throw it out, right? I didn't know either. Mm -hmm. uh, D's versified comes down with C. Uh, Alina D. Simmerji D. Michelle. Uh, Sheshtag B and JS with a B. The correct answer. So we got a, the whole coverage. Everybody knows that Christopher Columbus came to North America in 1492. So nobody guessed A. I put that out there <laughs> as a familiar date thinking I might fish some people in as, oh, that sounds familiar. Didn't work. The correct answer is D. Uh, black tea was invented in uh, 1590. Indeed. Okay. That is when it happened. I won't tell you anything more about that invention because the next question, question five, the final mm -hmm. question of today's tea trivia is where was black tea invented in 1590? Was it A, Wuyi? Was it B, Tongmu? C, Yunnan? Or D, Fujian? Mm. Where was black tea invented? All right. While well, you guys think about the question, uh, sorry, the answers, I just want to mention how much 
Mr. Rushworth enjoy making this because yesterday, based on what he told me, he was like, "Well, because today we have quite a session for black tea," and he was like, "Oh, we were crunch for time, so I would just make a three tea trivia." It turns out there's five, <laughs> five questions. Yeah. So he was really like he enjoy making those. They and just come up with those they just flowed out things. yesterday. They just flowed out. Flowed out. I just had questions like crazy. So the answers are coming. Um, yeah, is Cindy got a lucky guess on the last one. Good, good guess, Cindy. And you can't get a lucky guess if you don't take a guess. So good for you. Uh, Elena says yay, and Simrajit says a wui. Time signature says C Yunan. Cindy C, Elena C, uh, Jesus Estebanes says B, mm. and Bruna B. Igor says B. Lots of guesses for B, it looks like, uh, as well as C. C is the most popular answer. C is getting a lot of guesses. Okay, Ooh. guys, this is an interesting one. The correct answer, Simergy comes out with Ooh. A and D. Okay, this is, this is really good. The correct answer is actually A, B, and or D. It was, uh, black tea was invented. The order in English speaking is B, A, D. That's right. <laughs> Tongmu, comma, Wu Yi, because Tongmu is a small area in Wu Yi, and Wu Yi is an area in Fujian. Mm. So Tongmu, Wu Yi, Fujian is the uh, play, China, finally, is where black tea was invented. So great guesses, everybody. Uh, that concludes this week's tea trivia. I know, I know it's always a sad time when we have to say goodbye to tea trivia, but we're here to read a book and to go over a book and we're gonna get right down to it. And that starts now. Give me a thumbs up if you love my sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Let me, get, uh, let me get reorganized for some official business. You have a lot of uh, potential for emojis. Right, right. Yeah, I'm working on it so we can clip some emojis out of the, uh, out of the video stream. Which I have to say, uh, let me just have a quick shout out to, uh, to JS to say thank you for that work. I'm not disregarding mm. it. I just haven't had a time to, uh, to get those implemented yet, but I love that. So if you guys don't know, I'll tell you about it later. Let's jump into the book right now. But thank you, JS, for doing yes. all the work on the Discord emojis. I do want to get that implemented. It's just been tricky with the time. Zach knows where my uh, my uh, Wayne's World screen transition effect comes from. Nicely said. Thanks for the trivia. That was fun. So fun. Learned a lot. No ha ha ha. Interesting. Uh, no worries about the unlucky guess there. And uh, perfect. Thumbs up yeah, for the sound effects. It was fun because all of you guys participated. Yes. Thank you guys for participating, taking guesses, throwing in your uh, throwing in your two cents. So here we are at China Tea. Guys, we have been working our way through this book. I always love to start with the table of contents. So it we kind of shows how much we exactly went how through. far we've come, right? So we start with sort of the origins of tea, where does it come from, how to understand and appreciate the leaf, um, and then we got into uh, making tea and how to appraise slash appreciate tea, uh, including tea sets, tea itself, the water. Then we go through all the green teas. Okay, not all the green teas, guys. There's literally over thousands. We went through many of the popular green teas, talk about dark tea, lots of oolong tea discussion, and today we're rock and roll on black tea, all right? Mm. The intro to black tea is what we're gonna cover today. There it is, hom cha, woo yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, here we go. Black tea, let me scroll it up so you guys can see the whole little intro para. I will now proceed to read it. If there is a foreigner tell you black tea, in fact, what he said refers to the black tea instead of dark tea. This kind of difference between their names from different countries is because Westerns relatively emphasis on the color of the tea, whereas Chinese people relatively emphasis on color of the soup. Black tea is thermal, which make contribution to helping digestion, fighting cancer, and cardiovascular disease. Drinking black tea can also help to control asthma while drinking a cup of black tea, both be good at keeping health and heart. All right, I'm gonna unpack that. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do the next couple. So the right at the beginning, all right, we've got a little, I think we can, as the reader, we can untangle this, but they, they, got, all, they got all mixed up even in the translation. Oh, oh yeah, they, they, they really, um, 
bungled it because um, he said, in fact, what he said refers to the black tea. If a foreigner tells you black tea, in fact, what he said refers to black tea instead of dark tea. I guess it's not wrong. It's just really awesome. clumsy. Then that works in my logic. And basically, <laughs> because uh, black tea in English means black tea, of course. Right. What I mean is uh, <laughs> black tea in Chinese, we call that hong cha, which if we do word by word translation, right. it's a red tea. Well, we actually, if do word, word, word by word translation, we have a black tea, which now because black tea is so popular used to refer to hong cha, the red tea, now mm. we use the dark tea to say hei cha, which, mm. you know, if we just do word by word, it's black tea. Mm. So yeah, when I first read this, only just now I realized, oh, it's not as wrong as I thought, it's just clunky. And I think I know why, because in English, we would, this is explaining it again from a Chinese perspective, but in the English translation, it would make more sense to explain that hong cha means is directly translated red tea, which is mm. black tea, which was kind of left out. So anyway, I stumbled over that. It's actually correct, just slightly clunky. Uh, okay. Time Signature asked who translated it. I actually don't know, okay. um, but they, but they're, as we've said in other episodes, right? It's not to discredit the translation. A lot of the the stumbling blocks in the translation here are related to, are related to not just translating Chinese to English, but knowing the meaning of specific T terms. Mm. Te like in terms of straight translation, right? A lot of the stuff that's a stumbling block was translated correctly but not in the context of T mm. because they, it's easy to miss these. It's just like translating an engineering manual. Um, you could translate lots of things wrong if you don't know that these you terms... You need a knowledge of exactly. the field as exactly. well as language. And the translator's name is Tong Tong, if you care. There we go. So mm. we just checked out on the cover. And then the other thing that I found was interesting was... Um, uh, I didn't think there was any else to stumbling, but just interesting to say... Uh. There's a, uh, a little bit of something. Oh, I that wasn't it, done yet. Oh, oh. I was just sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I just like black tea okay. is thermal. Made me think we've gone over. We've been we've been at this for a while. So this sounds like it's talking about the character of black tea vis-a-vis -vis the that? property vis-a-vis -vis TCM. Right. So I think it's warming. A warm. Right. Yes. Right. Oh, you got that. Impressive. Yeah, I put warming in, in a thing. Yeah. And I, that reminded me that I wanted to let you guys know that the link is down below. Is the link down below? Right. To the finished translation. I think it would be helpful for you guys if you head, grab that on our website and kind of pull it up and have a little look at the finished one so you can read along with it. Um, oh, you saw my happy and sad faces. Right. So, yeah. and that's about it for this. And then I had an asthma. I didn't know about the control asthma aspect of black tea. That's kind of cool. So. No, it mentions more emphasis on aged black tea. Oh, that Just was totally lost. With, I don't know yeah, much in terms how exactly yeah, that works. Legal Just, disclaimer, we're not doctors and we're not, you know, we're just translating the book. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it's in, uh, last sentence talking about uh, it's good at uh, keeping health and heart. It's more like uh, talking about it's good for your health as well as mind. Oh. Yeah, it's a hard oh. uh, the thing, like uh, in Chinese, uh, we talk that as organ as well as mind. It's right, good. right. And that's really lost yeah. because they mentioned this here. I saw. So it was very much sort of uh, a general, like, health, you know, it kind of seemed like they were restating this, but it's actually healthy, good for your body, good for your mind. Right. Mm. Great. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's check out the, uh, we got a little uh, Q&A going on, so yeah. I want to address that. Have a look. So who translated, check, answered. Mm -hmm. This uh, Zach said, this sentence would contain two languages, so it's weird to see it in one language. Yeah, kind mm. of. It kind of contained two frame of references. And I think you're right. That's kind of what I was getting at is when you translate to English, the frame of, would be better if you flip the whole frame of reference to be mm -hmm. from a Western perspective. Right. Um, Igor says, we need global consensus to eliminate this error with red tea, black tea, and dark tea. Yeah, that's a great opportunity we have. We're here with you guys from all over the globe. Oh, mm. by the way, by the way, shout out where you're from. Uh, if you're okay with that, like what country you're in, because it super jazzes us. We get really excited to see, like uh, we know Igor's in Spain. So uh, some of you in other countries may actually call it red tea as well. I'd love yeah. to know about that. 
So let us know if, if in your language, mm. if it's also known as red tea or something else. Yeah. Totally very interesting to us. We'd love to learn about that. Mm. But I agree, Igor, we need a global consensus. Actually, it's okay as long as we all understand. That. Here right? is the yeah. thing, as long as we all understand that, because mm. how a language talk about one thing could be quite different, like the ground apple. Pomme de terre. Right? Pomme so, de terre. But it's the kind of, it's still, <sighs> what? I don't think it really means uh, apple of the earth. Okay. But, uh, but what I mean is if you do those kind of, there could be different ways. Just uh, when we talk about language, mm. maybe put the whole mindset of right, different right. rather than stick with the right. language one is, version. Language is so culturally complex. Mm. By, by, by baselining it across the globe, you would lose a lot. Mm. I think that's kind of... Uh, maybe not what you said, I don't know but what a different I'm version. I'm just the same. Maybe time signature comes out with: uh, mm -hmm. Are those health benefits statement based on actual research, or are they just received wisdoms? Mm, good question. Mm, there's a tons of researchers on uh, uh, health benefits of mm. uh, various T types. Mm. And it's an interesting question too, in the sense when he says uh, received wisdoms, there's mm. lots of research now going on to scientifically sort of to catch up Western science with traditional Chinese medicine, which you could call a kind of received wisdoms, but they're, more, they're a little bit more than that. They've been mm. observations over thousands of years. So there's this sort of uh, effort going on, a modern effort that's really exciting to me, where they're verifying a lot of these, uh, let, I'll use your term, received wisdoms. Mm. Um, I, I really love that, that they're having the thoughtfulness to go back. Yeah. Cindy, Northern California, oh yeah. I got to get a Beach Boys tune snuck into um, the tea trivia at some point just for Cindy. I don't know if she likes the Beach Boys, but... Uh, that's my uh, ringtone. That's right. That's <laughs> right. But it's the, isn't it the Minions singing the Beach Boys? Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. With a little twist, you got a call kind of thing. <laughs> and she, they call it black. Yes, yeah, so we call it black tea and right. I'm drinking Royal Yunnan black today. Oh, nice. nice. Uh, and uh, Bruna is also from Spain as well. Did you adjust to your R? Because uh, she's from Spain. Oh, you caught that. I did roll it a little bit. I tried to learn Spanish, but I couldn't do that. And they... Mm, I they, don't know. Yeah, I can. They call it black tea too. Alina Fialho de Melo, de Melo is in Toronto. I hope I didn't butcher your name too much. I'm sorry. It's really fun for me to... But I'm Brazilian. In Brazil, I've seen people refer to black tea and red tea as different mm. things. Mm. Ooh, that's another right. sort another of thing. confusing point is Roy, Roy Boss sometimes Roy picks up the Roy moniker Boss. Red Tea. Mm. Um, so that's a little third spin in there, but it's technically an herbal infusion or an herbal tea. Mm. Hey, Reiner, welcome to the stream. You're late, but it is nice to see you all. It's nice to yes. see you too, my friend. Welcome to the stream. Um, you can rewind later for the tea trivia you missed. Sorry. Uh, Cindy says, recently saw the Beach Boys with my 84-year-old mom who was really rocking out just before COVID. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, we also we saw the Beach saw Boys a couple yeah. years ago at Blues Fest. Reiner says he's drinking some Shupuar. Very great. Nice evening Thanks tea. for sharing that with us. Oh, and by the way, guys, you can throw out your tasting notes. If something just hits you, Absolutely. just blurt it out. We love that. Mm. And uh, Dees Versified says, hi, Reiner. Everybody says hello to Reiner. So hello to Reiner and back to the book, folks. Back to the book. Yeah, you got to brew some tea. I'm dry. All right, guys, on to um, first sight. Black tea belongs to the completely fermented tea. There are a lot of people fond of it both in China and other countries. It is the best both in production and sales in the world. Unique way to produce tea. The first basic processes are withering fresh leaves, rolling, fermentation, and drying up. Withering is the most important procedure at the beginning, which includes natural withering and heating withering. The time and degree of the withering are different because of the withering method season, and the degree of fresh leaves. Fermentation is the key to determine the quality of black tea. By fermenting, it can promote the oxidation of polyphenols and produce red, red pigment, theoflavins, and other oxidation products and form the unique color, aroma, and taste of black tea. All right, that's good for now. Let's back up a bit and let's unpack it. First sight. So first thing I have to say, I guess always, is that, um, let me get down here, completely fermented tea, all right? So we 
like to, one of the goals here is to baseline our terminology. And because we're talking about all the tea types and we already talked about dark tea, which actually has a microbial fermentation step, we find this term, well, it's not, I won't, wouldn't go so far as to say it's wrong. I will say that it's dar darn confusing and we prefer fully oxidized or completely oxidized tea mm -hmm. or completely enzymatically browned tea. And you'll find both of the words in the finished translation. I think it's nice to introduce people to both of the terms. The enzymatic browning is pretty technical. I think oxidation is great for a lay person. Um, and I think fermentation is okay as long as you clarify what the heck you're talking about. So anyway, the fermentation <laughs> they're talking about here is um, oxidation. And we see that it's a very popular tea. I didn't have much problem with that. Anything else there? Uh, in that sentence that you wanted to comment about? I think it's... In uh, the best, I mean, I think uh, the word should be the most. Right, right. It's the That's most... That's the only thing I feel largest like the production, best is like... A... Largest production and most sold in the world, yeah, right. Yeah. And I think they're talking about that as a global global production, not just Chinese production. Oh, yeah. And not just Chinese sales. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I wondered about that from a Chinese perspective. I'm not sure black tea is the biggest sales in China, um, but not in China. It's a uh, right. uh, green tea. Yeah, that's green what I Green tea thought. is dominant, even with the Chinese exportation. It's, right, right. Yeah, so it's, a, a, it's these black are, tea is the second place. But right. uh, if you count the global, especially like India and Kenya right. and all those. Yeah, places. they really stack it up. Yes. Right on. Good. Just kind of a neat little side fact. Right. Underneath unique way to produce, again, I, um, I think they mentioned the fermentation, so we've already mm -hmm. uh, beat that horse. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the withering was interesting how they talk about the... Uh, it, this sounded like it's the most important procedure at the beginning of the process. This is the... It's uh, a bit... I was a bit confused by it. Yes. I think that the reason it is is that there are a little bit tea term we call so in terms of making tea despite almost every tea has a two phase if you want to uh, uh, you know uh, group all those steps there are two phase one we call chu zhi second we call jing zhi uh, chu zhi mm. means uh, roughly process is most uh, process step is there is chu zhi after you finish it's called mao ta means it's roughly finished. Ah. Then there's a second phase which is called jing zhi. Jing zhi is a, means a little bit more, uh, uh, not careful, it's more like a, do a little bit selection, tasting, grading, mixing, and match different batches to balance it out, to ah. grade it, to do uh, even final drying or stuff. Right. So, and after that, that's the final thing that us as customers would buy on the market. Finish tea. Finish yeah. the tea. So that's our two major phases, I would say. That inside, all, under the, all those phases, there are different steps of tea processing. Right, right. So that's what's used in Chinese that gets her maybe a little bit confused or not very clear because it's the beginning stop. It's just in this uh, chu zhi phase. Right, that's where beginning thing. comes from. Okay. Yeah, that means, okay. that's what she translated as beginning, but it's not, Right, got it. And right. I think the, the key takeaway here is there's two ways to do withering, which is mm -hmm. natural and heat withering. Mm -hmm. And withering, how you do that depends on a bunch of factors, which are kind yes. of enumerated here. Yes. Just want to insert a little thing, because a lot of times the people feel, um, I think it's a contemporary, uh, you know, the environment of the whole uh, notion right now, whenever we take, uh, we have used the word natural as if it's better than anything else. Right. This is not like That's, that. Natural yeah. is just means that there's no heat uh, added or uh, to, um, while the other one has heat. It depends on the weather. If it's really cold and uh, the leaf takes too long, it's going to rack the batch. So they yeah. put a little bit of heat. It's not a good and bad. They are equally tools. Yeah, they're, yeah that's right. You've got to do what's right for the situation. Situation, right? And, that's right. And I think the key to really drive that home, I just want to repeat something that I right. heard, was it's, um, 
you know, you can't force this, you can't feel like, oh, this natural withering is better, it somehow is a better thing. You can just ruin your tea. If it's a humid, cool day, it's not going to wither fast enough and and you'll miss your window. Mm. Like these are, the tea is, read, what is it? We have a blog post about uh, a race against time, I think it's called, uh, or something like that. It's all about the, the, how each step is so time delicate. Yes. And so many decisions have to be made. Anyway. Yes. I'm going to take a quick note because I want to put that link down below. It's really, um, it's really a great read if mm -hmm. you want to appreciate how much effort a producer puts into making tea. Mm -hmm. Regarding, it's the water one. It's the one about water because basically, right. okay. Then so, uh, later on, I talk about the time and the degree. Time and the degree. Mm -hmm. The time and the degree. Right, right. Uh, the time is not about timing. It means duration, how long to weather. And degree, it means almost like mm. a, a degree is pretty clear, I think. Well, like how the, much the to level. wither. How yeah, much? the level of the withering yes. to attain. Yes. Um, right, and there, that depends on the method, the mm -hmm. season, and the, the degree of the fresh leaves, which mm -hmm. is kind of... These mm -hmm. things, I, I think when I read this, I kind of... I kind of let go and I would encourage you guys as well to do so as well. These are, there's only so much detail understanding of the process that we need as tea appreciators, as tea drinkers, as tea lovers, uh, because in the end of the day, it's incredibly complicated to make tea. Yes. Right? Um, but it is fun to know a little bit of the, uh, of the background. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the second para here, fermentation, um, is the t this is the one that I was waiting for. That's why I was a bit shocked by the withering mention here because oxidation, I'm going to just reuse the word oxidation here when I read mm -hmm. fermentation. This is the key step, as we learn in tea trivia, uh, of black tea and mm -hmm. hence to determine the quality of black tea. Yeah. So it, this is... In yeah. the second line, it talks about a red pigment. It's not a, just a pigment. Oh, it's good. A, um, in, I, I guess in chemical or biology, it's called uh, theorubigans. Theorubigans, right. It is an a anti antioxidant, mm -hmm, antioxidant, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just like a theoflavins. Flavins. Yes, right. So they got theoflavins, but they missed theorubigans. Yes. Okay, cool. And I noticed So you... those are also color pigment, like it makes the liquor this color, mm -hmm. but it's also antioxidant. Right. 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 Like a blueberry, why is it blue? I don't know. Is that a trick question? No, no, no. That's also... I know, I know. I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Their blue color is also an antioxidant. Yeah. So... Uh, for unique color, aroma, taste, and blah, to Yeah. Do you want to check on the uh, comment? A bit? Yeah, let's head over to the comments. And uh, looks like we got yeah. lots of them. Uh, late. Uh, hi, Reiner. Hi, Reiner. Michelle it's says... Uh, Michelle Shashtak says, I live in Wisconsin. Most people drink beer here, not tea. <laughs> love, love, love Wisconsin and love beer. Uh, you know nothing wrong with drinking beer, but uh, and that's what most people drink. Like uh, the situation that uh, in North America in general, I think. Mm -hmm, right. And Time Signature MMA says I vote for not using fermentation uh, when talking about oxidation. Yeah, mm. yeah. We kind of agree. I'm yeah. never, I'm never gonna call somebody out in a, you know, in a hard way because it's kind of understandable. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, oxidation is definitely clearer. Mm -hmm. Um, and Alina says, does natural withering versus heat withering infers that the flavor of the final product of the final product, or is that significant? I think we kind of answered that. Mm. I, I think it's not about the, uh, the final, it doesn't have a good or bad in terms of the final taste or anything. It's about reaching the right face for the tea. Right. Imagine 10 degree vis-a-vis -vis 20 degree, how the, the speed and, uh, you know, the oxidation, everything is different. The tea mm -hmm. production, especially when you're doing tasting grade, is very precise. You pass a certain uh, point, the tea will be wrecked. So in times, in certain times, it's important to provide a little bit of heat just mm -hmm. to make sure it's not like it's going to be 90 degrees. It's just to help the tea have the regular processing time. So I guess the answer to her question could be, uh, yes, it does have a, uh, 
does it infer the flavor of the final product? The, no. I would say I yes would say because no. it makes sure that the final product is good. Mm, by, okay. by forcing it to one or the other, regardless of your environment, you're you're disregarding your yeah you're stabilizing the your yeah it's sort of like doing the right thing at the right time mm -hmm. um but anyway there i think we've explained it enough that let us know if that if that was a good answer elena cindy says i'm with tsmma i know what time signature oh she's short in that tsmma okay it's confusing when fermentation is used yeah i agree that yeah. if once you start to get into dark tea and get out a broader understanding of tea it can definitely lead to confusion so hmm. uh, time signature appreciate the terminology clarity yeah hey Ian Kreisberg or Kreisberg let me know if I pronounce that wrong drinking an amazing Tiguan Yin. Yin here in South America oh it's oh, cool. it is so great to have people from all over the world whereabouts in South America are you we've got uh, we've got uh, who is it uh, let me just check up Alina I think is as uh, in Toronto but from Brazil if I recall yes. Cindy's in California Reiner's in Germany Igor's in Spain we've got people from all over Bruna also from Spain super fun I threw up the brew cam to share with you guys the uh, I wanted to just shoot out some tasting notes and well, share this be Yo, that's because perfect. your black t-shirt makes that really no black. that's perfect it was perfect but then it, it <laughs> kind of grabbed onto your uh, hands or something but it's uh let me go like that I'm too did close. it work I don't okay. know. front yeah. is better i think or like kind of in the plane of the anyway there's the beautiful liquor <laughs> color oh it's better now it okay. clear up uh, after we okay. come away oh, anyway good enough okay. good enough i think they can still see it even when it's on the table there mm. we just can't see it it's behind the book for us but yeah. uh this is a really nice tea i just wanted to point out the uh the fruity notes and the the cleanness in the mouth uh like after the sip you've got the lingering sweetness there's no coating on the mouth it's just fresh and watery mm. Mm. with that sweet uh light dry fruity okay just wanted to share that heading back to the book holy ham and vegan sandwich beautiful color there tsmma has the best exclamatives okay so that's a throwdown to everybody else I'm gonna read that with a little bit of uh, with a little bit of gusto. Holy ham and a vegan sandwich, right? Think about that. That's a layered exclamative, right? It's a whole. It's not just holy ham. It's holy ham and a vegan sandwich. Like this is really shocking, right? This is excellent. I love these time signatures. This really those make my day. I love those. Um, and Zach says looks red. Yeah, it's pretty red. It's on the uh, amber side of red. So I've seen some that are more on the ruby side. This one is gorgeous, deep. Use my clothes and everything. Mm, yeah, okay. very pretty. Yep, I'm the one originally from Brazil. Right, I got it right. Yay! Okay, good. Trying to keep keep track of all y'all. See, I use a little American there. All y'all. <laughs> all y'all is the plural of y'all. All right, guys, heading over to. Oh, yeah, that's not the right spot. I. Let me slow down. Here we go. Back to the book, guys. We're into the carefully watching section. The bright color of black tea is from its experience of fully fermented and materials in the tea are completely oxidized into the substances such as theoflavins and red pigment. Theorubicans. The charming fragrance. Black tea is strong and fresh, mellow and sweet. It has the fragrance of ripe fruits, longan, and smoke. Drink with milk. The milk aroma better mix with the tea aroma, which produces excellent mouth feeling. Mm. All right. Unpacking time. Where am I? Carefully watching. Um, yeah, I, I found the, uh, actually, this was pretty straight. This is a short section. I think it's pretty, the bright red color comes from, uh, because it's fully oxidized. Once we've understood fermented is oxidized, that's all right. And materials in the tea are completely oxidized. Yay, mm -hmm. she got that word into the substances such as theoflavins and theorubigans. I whispered it out for you guys. Mm -hmm. So once we've already talked about those terms, so I think once we've kind of got that, this is not too bad. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, moving along. Where are we? The charming fragrance. So drink with milk, I was a bit surprised to see in this book. But like, it's kind of nice. So uh, I didn't know Chinese. We don't. <laughs> we don't. We don't. But we don't. but you know. But sometimes do. What is the point out is especially if you read between the lines of the Chinese version, it's talking about black tea is compatible with milk. 
not every tea in terms of uh, sometimes you have tea that mixed with milk might be cloudy might be not as pretty mm. but black tea mixed with the milk right. visual wise is mm. not wrecked it is compatible wow. and in terms of the taste it's also uh, compatible and not not taking away from each other like milk and mm. green tea is really yeah if you put them together you will notice the whole clouds i never it's thought about that but as soon as you said it i was like oh how gross would that be like and mm. i first thought of and green tea then i thought of shampoo right the 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 tasting profile they don't they match. don't match they don't match right? yeah so yeah. that's just mentioning that and not to mention uh the tea a uh, uh, black tea is very very popular to go with mm. milk and mm. sugar kind of thing so just to say you can do that and it really smooths out the taste <laughs> and this is a good point probably cindy was kind of on the same page as me when i said i was a bit surprised i'm right. just going back to the comments here a little bit um uh, cindy says he sounds like a, sounds like batman episode so it totally does like that <laughs> like uh, robin would come out with those exclamatives when he was working with batman so um t TSMMA is our is our Robin. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully that's okay with you, TSMMA. Very interested to hear drink with milk. Cindy says I was under the impression that was forbidden in Gong Fu Cha. So that's like kind of the the Not sort of a very Gong Fu brewery. So the book is a two thousand eight, I think, around that time. And right. uh, you know, like uh, when was the Jinju May? Jinju May two thousand five ish, two thousand six. That's just when black tea is getting into more of a tasting level uh, tea we're talking about. Right. Uh, and uh, I think on Discord, one day, I think Igor threw out a picture of a Piao Yi Bei, the little uh, glass cup with the mm. brewing. Those are more of a black tea brewing vessel. So if black tea old times is not not much talking about the Gong Fu brewing. It's a really recent like a decade when we talk about those things. Yeah, I'm just taking a note. I'll put a little link to the Chao Yi Bei mm. if people are interested. I was really interested by that Piao picture. Piao. Oh, Piao Yi Bei. P-I-A-O. Yep, yep, yep. Piao Yi Bei. I was really interested by that picture. I had never seen that format of cup, Igor, so thank you for sharing that. Um, and Zach says that his mm. mom used to make them black tea with milk all the time growing up, which Even is milk, like bubble teas that have a black tea and milk. I think yeah, that yeah. was really Yeah, yeah. And what is it? The new there's a yeah. I don't know if it's new anymore, but like uh, what is it called? Hong Kong black tea or whatever, where they put the coffee tea and milk. Yeah, Yuan Yang. Yuan Yang. Yeah. So we've we've made those at home. Those are super fun, and then you can get fancy. But it, it's nice that um, I think it's good to be loose and and understanding that you know yeah in Gong Fu tea maybe you have a black tea that's uh, good enough to stand on its own, but it's okay to, you know, and somebody was having bubble tea when we said, what are we all drinking? Oh, you yeah. know what? It all works. It's just and about... my favorite milk tea is our top grade last on Suzhong with Ay milk. Yo, my God. It's really good. Mm. So I guess that's a good point though, right? Mm -hmm. Like my reaction is still kind of negative, but it works. You know, it's, a, it's just the same as making a hamburger with a, a really great steak. You throw the great steak in the meat grinder, but good ingredients make great food. Mm -hmm. So if you want a top grade bubble tea, you gotta use a top grade black tea, okay? Mm. There we go. Does drinking, Cindy asks, does drinking, oh wait, Time Signature MMA says, we had black tea, tea bag tea with loads of sugars when I was a kid. Mm. And now I kind of get why, and I remember my parents and us asking if we could have tea. And it's one of the first, you know, your parents are probably not going to give you a big cup of joe, right? A big cup of coffee when you're mm. a kid because you're going to be bouncing off the walls. Mm. But tea is kind of in the zone that if the kids ask, because kids always want to be grown up, can I have a cup of tea? And the, you're likely to get a get allowed and but those tea bags pretty much need some sugar because they're pretty bitter pretty astringent right so it's to soften that out and go with the milk and and also kids love sugar <laughs> Cindy asked does drinking black tea with milk uh, does drinking black tea with milk have a long history in India like the chai we get here I don't know I don't know that's a great question I would like I thought the, the drinking uh, that with milk started in England 
as England, uh, the English uh, was the mm. one who brought the tea plant yeah. to sneak out from China to, to India, India to create their own export right. business to back to Europe, which went, you know, pretty well, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the uh, no, but and and I'm not sure they started right away. I think early times they didn't do that. Somehow but I don't know. I have it's the a great question. Of the story that didn't went so well. That's why they make things uh, milk and sugar because it wasn't a really uh, uh, drinkable. Drinkable. Mm. Sorry. No, it's okay. Like a little crowded over there. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So yeah. great question. Let's double check on this. Yeah, yeah. Not if not anybody finds true. out, maybe you could. Yeah, uh, Simergy may be having better knowledge than us. Yeah, yeah. Shoot it into the comments here, mm -hmm. or shoot it into our Discord. We mm -hmm. can pick it up over there. Mm -hmm. um, Reiner says in northern parts of Germany, eat East Friesian tea is quite common. East Friesian 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 strong, tea. Strong black tea with milk and a big chunk of sugar called clunch. Oh, let me try. Let me try. <laughs> Pluntias, I don't know. Pluntias, I don't know. I'm gonna guess it's that's how I pronounce it. But uh, so they use a rock sugar though, kind of like what uh, probably well similar, but it sounds well, like it might similar? even be bigger. I'm wondering. Let us know. I'm thinking it's a chunk like that, right? Like we use rock sugar in cooking. If you check out one of our videos for doing um, do the ribs, rocks. for doing the ribs, we have a video how to do the little ribs, and the right. rock sugar is featured in that. So that's about the size we're talking about. I'd be curious to know what size these well, there's uh, the pluntias sizes. are. There's a, those are big ones I used to break them. Super cool. Mm. Zach says, yeah, my family is English, so that's why we drank it with milk slash sugar. Simmerjeet, in India, tea is typically with milk. milk. Ah, thanks, yeah. Simmerjeet. Cindy says, when I lived in England, everyone put milk in their tea. So tea went to England from India. They added milk and that idea returned to India. Hmm. hmm. Very possible. Very interesting. I'd like to know if somebody knows, please share. I, I, I nailed the, tr the pronunciation. I don't know. Oh, yeah? Maybe I shouldn't go too far. He didn't say I nailed it. He said it's good. It works. And it works. So I was uh, pretty close. And you pronounced it right. Okay. Thanks, oh. Reiner. Thanks. That's awesome. It's fun to try, okay? It's yes, fun it's to try. Very fun. I encourage you guys to take a guess, you know, on the trivia or to just throw out the question. So I, I feel I'm obliged to at least try. Um, so that's where all of that comes from. All right, guys. Back to the book. Mm -hmm. Sliding over this page into the basic classification of dark tea. Oops. <laughs> okay, basic classification of dark tea. Oh, why is that only dark tea? Yeah, they made a mistake, okay. as far as I can tell. Right, right. Um, Xiao Zhong black tea. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, I guess I'll just read the... Uh, I don't think you need to read this. Yeah, I'll just read the three categories. Xiao Zhong right. black tea. Just highlight those. Gong Fu black tea. Yes. And black shredded tea. CTC. Are the basic classifications of black tea. <laughs> Somehow they got so. Um, my I did have a question though, which is, mm -hmm. what the heck is this? I didn't know what this mm -hmm. is. Like as a as a reading a translation, I can kind of you know. Right. You might even if you've read the book in order, you know what Gong Fu Tea is now, so you can handle. I'm, again, I'm trying to approach this as somebody reading the book as maybe new to tea. Gong Fu Black Tea. I guess that means okay. Yeah, we're gonna brew the black tea with the guy one. No. Black. Sh Ayo, not even. So <laughs> these don't really, and just having- Sorry, a, I'm so brutal. No, that's okay. And just all we have is a list of teas, so it doesn't elucidate for us at all. It doesn't explain to the reader what are the differences of these classifications. Mm. Oh, but it's down here. Maybe I should continue. No, those are tell you, those are not identification. Oh, identification of good and bad. Yeah, it's more like appraisal. Kind of to know, oh, this is a good tea, this is a bad tea. Yeah, mm. those all different types. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my question: is what are those then? I um, I, because I my other think, question was why, right. why they have to put gong fu, gong fu, gong fu, right? Those it's, are the tea name. Right, right, but it's, it's this gong fu is not the tea how you brew it. Ah. It's the tea name we call that uh, qi men, right? The qi men gong fu. That's the full name of this tea, qi men gong fu. Mm. So let's uh, talk, I think uh, the way, uh, let me just organize the thought a bit. I think the way is I'm going to explain those three types of black tea, then mm. you might have a better understand of them. So in terms of a black tea based on the process and a little bit of where it's produced, 
there are three in general three types of black tea so the last one black shredded mm. tea refers to ctc black tea which right. we see a lot like usually in tea bags so here because the translator doesn't know much about uh, tea so based they translate the Chinese name literally, so leaf tea, shredded tea, but uh, in terms right. of tea, uh, CTC, there is those grays, like a pico, like a dust, the all those. Right. That's what this Oh, and part, that's what this is. This are, that's why it's powder tea. It oh. means dust. So oh. if you know... Fannings. Fannings right. and all those. So, so those mm. goes to CTC, which we will just touch on. And it's not a major, it's a major exporting tea right. exporting China, uh, tea in terms of uh, chinese black tea but um, uh, since we talk a lot of about uh, tasting gray tea and that's what we're specialized we would just uh, touch on that if right. you want to learn more about ctc's or stuff there's tons of information and in terms of language i don't think there's many you know misleading since it's uh, invented in right in the west and it's pretty mm. well explained and right, the other right, two is a little bit like a, maybe a new concept to a lot of the tea drinkers. Xiao zhong hong cha, which here is talks as a xiao zhong black tea, means xiao zhong hong cha, it means zheng shan xiao zhong, aka lap sam su chong. So in our mm. website, you notice we keep like lap sam su chong and kimen, mm -hmm. and we talk about how uh, we don't we don't use English name we use Chinese name mm. for me uh, those are okay because those are not word by word translation mm. I'm just anti those word by word translation right. because it depends on how you group them they can have different meanings yes. that's uh, the character yes. of Chinese language so mm -hmm. Kimen and the Lapsan Suzhong those are pronunciation based mm. so I'm pretty fine usually you can know what exactly Tian talks about same with the Tie Guan Yin, there are several spells based on your right, like we like saw Cantonese earlier. or Mandarin, those are all mm. fine. And uh, Lap San Su Chong here is uh, Zheng Shan Xiao Zhong, that's the Mandarin right. uh, spelling. And uh, Yan Xiao Zhong, which means um, it's um, from outside of uh, Zheng Shan Xiao Zhong, from outside, but using the similar stuff. It's like a mimic ah. of Lap San Su Chong. Which okay. we will talk a little bit more in, uh, I think, next week. Oh, wow. Next so week. basically, like you said, this is the lap song. The lap song. Yeah, it's on process. I think ah. next week we will be, if not next week, the week after, we will mm. be explain a little bit more about lap song. So, right. so I won't Stay dive tuned. in too much. Stay tuned. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So it's a process difference. This fundamental. Yes. That's why it cannot be balled with the other yes. Gongfu black tea. Well, Gongfu black tea is a Gongfu Hong Cha. It's another process which, you know, Kimen, Qimen Gongfu, that's the full name. We mm. simplify as Qimen, which is the location. Ah. Dian Hong Gongfu, Dian Hong, Yunnan location. Black Tea, location. Mm. Uh, Yi Hong, Yi Hong is a place, uh, Gongfu. Then you have uh, Yi Chang is in Hubei. And uh, you have uh, Chuan Hong, Sichuan Black Tea, Sichuan, Gongfu. Chuan. Because those teas take a long time and they take a lot of time, so that's why it's not as gongfu. But uh, a lot of time. Take a lot of time to make? Yes. The produce? Okay, yes. again. Okay. So, uh, but uh, to simplify, because they all end with gongfu, so simplify mm. a lot of times, we just uh, call that uh, dian hong, chuan hong, or stuff. Is this a Hunan black tea? Yes. Oh, see, I'm getting it, guys. And next is a yue hong. Not Yunnan, no. So Yue home would be. It's an uh, area in the east uh, coast. Oh, okay. Anyway, so those are those uh, black tea. It's not about how they were brewed. It's uh, this is just the tea name. The full is tea name a... of Qimen is Qimen Gongfu. Hong Cha or Qimen Gongfu or Qi Hong Gongfu. Qi Hong Gongfu, nice. So, question: Is it also uh, indicate? Um, I guess it does indicate it's clearly not in the CTC level. It is in the Gong Fu level. It can still mm -hmm. be a lower in that. They're not crushed. They're not cut. Right. They're not but a, there can be medium, low, and high grade ones Every in one the Every one of them Fu. have their own. Got you. And own even grade. the Lapsang, we also Absolutely. have seen. Okay, got you. So it's just a, the. Uh, okay, I think that uh, really explains it well. And that was not. I don't think there was any way for me to guess that here. But uh, wow, I learned a lot. And I just wanted to come back to Dian Hong because I think a few of you, at least a few of you, are familiar mm -hmm. with it. 
And just because the Dien Hom indicates the place, uh, mm -hmm. Yunnan, and that's not obvious for Westerners, um, but Dien is like a nickname for Yunnan or something? Like, how does yeah, that work? Yeah. So, so we, that's why we say it's name based, even though it's not Yunnan Hom Gong Fu, it's Dien Hom. Um, just because that. Yeah, you can call that Yunnan Black Tea. Mm. Like and how you call yeah, oh. we sometimes say Yunnan black tea, nothing wrong with that either. Mm -hmm. it, but it, I would It's more concise, it, how, it's like how English has a USB, you know, rather than... Say USA? <laughs> I don't know what's the full name of USB. United Storage, States of America? Oh, USB. no, Universal Serial Bus, right. You know, like those kind of concise version, right, that's right. how Chinese version. language do concise. Right, right. Mm. It's just not linear for us to get from Yunnan to Dian. It's kind of a, it's it's a really ancient tricky. name. Ancient name. Okay, yeah, that's lots of the uh, region names are different than current because it's like ah, it has some historical right, right. Uh, linear right, there. Right, right. I'm from. For those of us from North America, we're talking about you know three, four hundred years, but in China, of course, they're talking about three, four thousand years of history. So there's lots of chance for. And those. there's the changes in terms of names and stuff. Mm. But those you kind of have to learn is not something you can guess. You can't much. guess it, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to zigzag myself to the uh, upper left here, guys. Whoop, whoop. Did that work? No. Oh, that's the logo. Go. Cool. Let me just find my upper left, upper right. Upper right is what I meant. Okay, hi. Okay. I'm back. Hello. <laughs> all right. So we'll come to your comments. I see all the comments. I'm just going to... Uh, do you want to do that now? Or? Yeah, do the Okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's hit the comments because they're, they're flooding a... in. They're flooding in here. I so uh, <laughs> we love that. Keep them coming. We love the questions. We love the uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. So we were back down and Reiner said I pronounced it right. I celebrated. And then uh, we move on. Simrajit <laughs> says, uh, big leaf tea from Assam was always, always served with yeah. milk. Mm, mm. Okay, good to know. Um, and uh, I'm going to share something with them because a lot of people might not know that um, that Assam is, is this right? Assam, Puar? There's a relationship between Assam and Puar. Oh, cultivar. the Assam cultivar, like Camellia sinensis, is a Assamica? Mm. Uh, in Chinese, its Chinese name is uh, Puar, as mm. a cultivar. Puar mm. is a cultivar, it's a location, it's also a kind of tea. Tidbit! Okay, that's for the people who stuck around, you got that. <laughs> okay, and Cindy says, glad you clarified Xiaozhong black tea. I'd never heard of that. Okay. Right, so uh, Xiaozhong, um, what's the ending? Oh, oh, Jinsai Xiaozhong, Xiaozhong mm -hmm. Hong Kong. Right, right, right. Anyway. Okay, lapsa. Well, lapsa. Thank you for letting me know because sometimes I try to explain and maybe I don't do a good job, mm -hmm. which you can always point out and let me know where it's, you know, blurry. Because sometimes, because we have been together, sometimes he would automatically fill in the information I didn't clear yes. as well. So 100%. Don't hesitate Never to hesitate. tell me where I didn't explain yeah. well. So, yeah. Or it can Which be also means uh, I really appreciate that uh, if, if, if you guys let me know that I did yes. a great job, you would understand yeah. what Yeah, And I'm it's saying. also possible I just don't, didn't think of that angle or to mm -hmm. ask that mm -hmm. question. So yes. definitely shoot them out and let, or let us know if, if uh, the explanation was helpful to you. That's really helpful. Mm -hmm. I love Reiner's question here. This is a fantastic one. Are there black teas, Reiner asks, which are more suited for relaxation and drinking in the evening or are they all similar in effect? So I kind of have an answer for that if I could okay. share it. You can correct me if I make I any mistakes. I don't have much thought on this. My actually. thought is this, is because I've, uh, I've had and sometimes have a sensitivity to caffeine that, you know, it doesn't make me freak out. Well, use your own judgment if you think it makes me freak out or not. But because <laughs> maybe they're like, what do you mean it doesn't make you freak out? Every time we're on, every time we're on a live, you're freaking out. <laughs> and, and I assumed it was a tea. Are you just crazy? It can be that. Anyway. Um, it could be that. Um, my, my comment was just that I think it's really a personal thing. Mm. And it's something that will change over time. So I've, I've been sensitive to caffeine to where after sort of 5 p.m. I stay away from all tea except shupuar, which for me doesn't make me uh, overly zingy. Doesn't get me too hyped up. On the other hand, I talk to my brother-in-law and he's like, you drink what in the night? Shupuar, it gets him totally wired. So there's a very... Really? Yes. Oh. I think generally, I still tell people, I think Shupar is your safest bet to experiment with, but, but understand that you may be affected. So don't pick a night before a big, important day in your life to try that. You might be up all night. 
I don't know. It's a personal thing. So try it out. And the same with black tea. I think, I think different black teas will hit you in different ways if you pay attention. Mm -hmm. And you might be able to find one, I would guess, that might, uh, that might be a little more delicate with your um, caffeine sensitivity. That's my take. Um, mm -hmm. But great question. I love the, uh, the spirit of the question, right? Um, if you're drinking for effect or if you're just wanting to enjoy some tea without the negative effect of having a bad night's sleep. Well, just to add to that, mm. if you're talking more about uh, caffeine content and in terms of a tea relationship, we have a video yeah. uh, talking about tea and health where I kind of explained at length about uh, the relationship between tea and caffeine and it's not as uh, linear or simple as a lot of times we talk right, about. There's right. many factors that affect it yeah. to which yeah. I I'm actually going to put a link I'll put a link possible. down below to that spot in right. the video. I'm going to be really fancy and put the link right to that spot. Bam. Mm. <laughs> so Cindy said, oh, so what I'm drinking at the moment, Royal Yunnan is a Dian Hong, right? Yes, it could have another name. Uh, as <sighs> Dian Hong. Dui, dui. Yes. Yes. But well, how would you, is there a way to throw the royal in front of it so she can maintain the fancy level? Well, just keep the current name. No, no. I mean, what if she want to say Dian Hong, but say royal? The royal Dian Hong? I don't know. You don't have a little Chinese word for that? No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Cindy, I tried. You All mean right. You Gong Ting, right? Oh, when you talk about those. Gong Ting? Gong Ting. Gong Ting. Gong Ting. Gong Ting. Means royal palace. Gong Ting Dian Hong. There you go, Cindy. Gong Ting Dian Hong. Tell your friends. Impress them. All right, and then um, Zach Webb says, like Beijing used to be pronounced Peking. Mm. Pronounced, I, th I think that's a Western transliteration, but a, yeah, is that a I think Cantonese? It's or? A, um, Western, the old way, I think so. It could be re uh, referred to before the Beijing, like uh, mm. before the 1949, it was uh, Beiping, it was the older name. Ah. But uh, before that again was Beijing again, so it, it could be the early times when the West go to the East and they... Yeah, we used to call it Peking and Peking Duck. It's still Peking Duck, it seems. They don't call that Beijing Duck. Not here, they don't. Right. What do you, but you call it Beijing Duck. At yeah, home. Beijing Roasted Duck, Beijing Kaoya. Beijing Kaoya. Mm. Mm -hmm. Really good, guys. Super delicious. <laughs> um, and tricky to make. Peking, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, no, you were right. Um, and Cindy says, so Puar is made of a Samaka cultivar. Yes and no. Mm. Uh, you explain. Really? What? I don't know, I would have said yes. Uh, because uh, a Samaka cultivar re refers to the tree cultivar, like a Samaka, like uh, the Puar cultivar is the name. But Puar now as a finished tea, if you were talking about Puar, there's also who are oh. made with little bushes. Right, true. And in terms true. of a cultivar, you can even find the Dabai Hao, like a white tea cultivar in Yunnan, or even Longjing cultivar Right, in right. Yunnan. Puar so, has a really interesting history, even before it exploded. No, I would say especially before its explosion, which I think you can find out about in, uh, in um, uh, Chao Ren magazine, uh, which is l always linked down below. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but I, I'm always struck him because when I was there, we saw the little, the trees that are chopped at almost ground level. Because at one time, the trees weren't considered uh, super special. In fact, bush tea was more popular. So they chop the tree at ground level, guys. Okay, so like, <clears throat> right? Nowadays, we'd be freaked out by that, right? But, and then it grows up a bunch. The tree doesn't want I think it's on our uh, blog post. Yeah, blog so the, post. and then the tree comes up so with we'll a bunch of things to. look like a bush. I put yeah. a... Oh, I better put more detail. But that's different than uh, just a bush bush. Also it's not a bush. Right. It's still a tree. tree. I'm just yeah. saying that that reminds me of that and it's funny. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, dive into the next session. Sure thing. Let me just do the sound effects here. All queued up. So guys, there's nothing. I just wanted to say there's no censorship going on here. I don't know what happened with my uh, scan, but those white lines are just an artifact of my scan so there's no censorship going on there's nothing just something weird <laughs> happened there because i've noticed that i'd like it look like it looks like a top secret document i had to right. hide the confidential that's not what's going on here uh -huh. all right so i'll just go column by column okay xiao zhong black tea one appearance fat stripes two color moist and strong red after being immersed in water three aroma high and durable smells like a smells like a little bit pine shoot 
Four, soup, deep golden as the syrup. Five, hang on, I gotta, I'm gotta. i reading off the actual screen, so let me just, um, let me read off the book instead. I can't move this or it might mess up. Five, taste mellow and sweet with aroma of longan. Six, bottom leaf, thick and smooth bronze colored. Um, I'm going to unpack these one at a time, I think, just to kind of, I think we can plow through these. These weren't too confusing. My thought is uh, maybe a read through, so yeah, I okay. can talk them all through okay, okay. because those are pretty specific. Yeah, got you. So Gong Fu Black Tea, one, appearance, good quality of tight and slim and well-proportioned strips. Otherwise, loosened and unwell-proportioned are bad ones. Two, color, good quality in moist, bright, unwell-proportioned brightness. Dark gray, bright are bad ones. Three, aroma. The best one has an elegant fragrance. The second in a grassy smell. The worst one in lower smell. Four, soup. Red and formed a golden lap in the cup is the best one. The second one is less bright. The worst one is dark and turbid. Five, taste. The mellow, the best. The bitter, the worst. The rough and light, the worst. It seemed like they're giving a little hierarchy yeah. of uh, yes. of good, bad, or bad, best, better, worse. Bottom of leaf. The best one is bright at the bottom. The second is in flower blue. The worst is dark with strips. Heading back up for CTC slash also known as black shredded tea. One, appearance. Black shredded tea requires well proportioned in shape. Tea particles, volume tight leaf tea bar tight and straight. Tea wrinkle and thick powder tea is in a sand green. Sorry guys, this is a chunky, a little bit hard to read. Shredded pieces, leaf and powder should be distinguished. Shredded tea does not contain pieces and powder tea and powder tea does not exit in powder tea and powder tea does not contain ash. Wow, I have no idea what just happened. There. I have no idea either. Color, moist and maroon. Avoid dark gray and yellow, <laughs> right? Three, aroma. Top grade black shredded tea has higher fragrance and has the smell of fruit, flower, and jasmine. Four, soup. The best are bright red, the worst are dark and turbid. Five, taste. The best one tastes strong and fresh, the worst ones taste light. Six, bottom of leaf. The best are bright red, the worst are dark and mixed. Okay. Okay. I want you to smell this. Wow. Right? It smells like honey and wood. It definitely got a honey thing. And really it's sweet. Reason sweet. Mm. It's sweet, but not, um, like it's sweet like how honey it has a sweet smell but not that overpowering sugary mm -hmm. you know that i guess where the wood comes in yeah i guess all right guys let me uh i'll unpack a couple of my things here first um so back to Xiaodrong black tea okay so we learned that's lap song but i actually didn't know that when i first read through it mm -hmm. so right color moist okay we don't think typically of moist as a color so I, w I was just like, what, I wonder what that means, was my only reaction moist, there. just lustrous. Lustrous, okay. Yeah. Have that shiny, that sheen that water would give. Maybe right. it has that. I think these, air, like this whole section is uh, relatively rough in terms of the translation mm. because there's lots of tea terms here and it's hard to translate uh, for somebody right. who doesn't know right. tea. So I delight to avoid going word by word and correcting. Right. But uh, I, uh, I think the better way to do it would be summarizing right. something in common as a good black tea vis-a-vis -a, -vis a bad black tea. Right, because something that's what this can... section is all about, as it says yes. here. It's trying to help something you figure out what's a good, kind of bad. go across all tea types mm. is when you look at the dry leaf of the black tea, you want something more uniform. Like mm. even in the black shredded tea here, talking about CTC, it talk uh, really complicated. I don't even know what it means. But right. in Chinese, simplified well to me is matches as great. Right. If it's a fattening, right. it matches what the grade requires. 
But if it's powder, it doesn't have chunks in it. Yes. It's powder. Yes. Mm. So with other uh, and as all tea similar is they have to match. And again, black tea, there are so many black teas. We cannot use one single right. uh, criteria, metric, criteria. metric mm. to fitting everybody. We still have to dive into specific teas. What's the requirement for Xiaozhong? Like the top grade Zhenshan Xiaozhong. It is a small leaf. Right, you cannot say, oh, those are are those are shakes. Those are not shakes. Those are what they supposed to look like. Or if you talk about other like a Gong Fu Hong Cha, you probably look more whole in terms of either buds or leaves. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, again, all those are rough guidance for black tea. Uh, right. In terms of appearance, then yes. you can kind of do the same thing with color, right? right? With a radiance, all the good all good teas have. Uh, relative uh, beautiful radiance. Uh, again, I like to use uh, people as a metaphor to say a healthy glow, not an oily skin. So that kind of radiance needs a little bit, right. you know, like my forehead right now is a little bit, that's overly oily because <laughs> I have a oily skin. But you know, met that off, uh, healthy people have that mm. from inside, that certain radiance, that glow right. from inside. Yeah, moist and maroon. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I just read that one. I just highlight, you know, they all have that strong red, uh, bright, moist and maroon. That's the good aspect. Yeah. Aroma, similar, yeah. right? You want something um, high, durable. Durable, lingering. Um, elegant fragrance. That's right. And... Um, you know, liquor color depends on liquor. Usually, black tea, we're talking about red liquor, but if you're, this tea has a lot of buds or stuff, sometimes it's golden liquor. Right. Also possible, depends on the specific tea right, type right. itself. Then, brewed leaves, you want those sturdy looking, uh, smooth, juicy looking tea leaves. That's kind of a, what you're looking for. Right. One thing I'd like to point out, which is totally not a presentative in um, the translation, is talking about what's the Chinese tea, especially Gong Fu tea. They have a very, uh, again, a Chinese thing. It's very characteristic. It's a Huang Jin Quan. Uh, in Chinese, we call that Huang Jin Quan Leng Hou Hun, which means is it forms a golden ring around. To show them how full you got that. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like the challenge of fill that to the top. And Not a drop came out yet. though. It's Not right at the yet. spout. Can you see the spout? Very pro. <laughs> Very pro. But still spill. Anyway, it's not what you're supposed to do. Uh, <laughs> you know, I have those. I, I Do you guys have those like bad habits? Anyways, so, and uh, Chinese uh, You're just trying to tea. keep the reader lubricated. I think it's very noble. <laughs> yeah. The Chinese tea also have, after it cold, it gets cloudy. It's a good quality in great Chinese Oh, tea. after it gets cold. Right. Yes. Because the, um, anyway, we won't get into the chem. It's a cool chemistry thing as the solubles start to per per precipitate. Mm -hmm. out of the tea mm -hmm. um, it's not the when they describe the bad ones here they say turbid which is that other kind of cloudy that we definitely don't want which is mm -hmm. right away when brewed yeah. it's uh, I love the word turbid because it even has to me that nasty sound that make you think oh it's like a swampy that kind of cloudy you know like yeah. swamp water mm -hmm. it's not something that makes me think oh that's pleasant um, but yeah, I just like that. I've, so cool. I've been playing this game. So we've got like mellow and sweet, so mellow. So kind of just summarize the whole Yeah, thing. I love that. I love that. So, um, so wait, here? I wanted to, before I, yes, we'll do comments. Good one. Okay. <laughs> then we'll, we'll tease them a little bit at the end okay. with next week. All right. So we have tons of comments here. I am um, just looking for Royal Yunnan. Yes. Peking smoke. Here we go. Mm. So Asamaka, I smoked. I smoked lapsang is awesome for relaxing. Oh, oh, unsmoked. He means unsmoked lapsang is awesome for relaxing. Oh, right, right. right. Autocorrect strikes again. <laughs> Evil autocorrect. Mm. Cool. Good tip for, uh, I think it was Reiner looking for something like, like that. So you could try mm. that. Um, and Cindy says, regarding caffeine sensitivity, the first step in recovery is admitting you have a problem. Mm. <laughs> and then drown yourself in caffeine and you'll become less sensitive. That's, I think that's what happened to me. I'm not recommending that is necessarily the best way, 
But I'm now I can have like an oolong in the evening. I can I'm pretty uh pretty open. I still avoid greens and whites in the evening, but I have had like uh, aged whites and um, in the evening without too much negative effect. So I'm getting pretty yeah. uh pretty uh caffeine impervious. Time signature MMA says holy historical linguistics. <laughs> love it, just love it. Uh, Reiner says, oh, I am drinking some Gong Ting Shu Pua right now. Mm. Didn't know that it means royal. Ah, yeah. Palette. Uh, you can say, uh, depends on how people translate. Sometimes mm. it's royal, sometimes translate as palace. Mm. Mm. But cool. what it all means is using a little bit more butt. Fancy. Right? Mm. So then I try out uh, many black teas to find out how I react to them. Happy me. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's a win-win. Except for maybe the bad night's sleep. But hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully not. You can also um, kind of ease yourself into it. Yeah. Igor says, determining the caffeine in a tea is difficult. It depends on many, yes, many factors. Quality, age, type of leaf, number of infusions. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put that link down below so you guys can uh, check that uh, tea and health video out and see uh, our take on that. Cindy says... TSMMA, you crack me up. You crack me up too. I love it. Zach Webb, the good, the bad, and the rough and turbid. <laughs> nice, nice. That's a great rebranding of the great Clint Eastwood movie, which we recently finally, I finally got her to watch it. Yeah. Classic. And Time Signature MMA. All I remember is a cigar after meal is good. Mm, <laughs> that's right. Time Signature MMA says, but really, why hire a translator who doesn't know the appropriate... Yeah, you know, you kind of get what you get sometimes. Yeah, it's publishers. hard to get in both sides because right. Because most of the people who do Chinese tea are domestic based. Right. Or they're like tasting great Chinese tea are domestic based. If you talk about knowing mm. tea that will be exporting tea, mostly are considering uh, like international yeah. commerce. International I'm trying to think of a good thing. metaphor. So less of the tea thing. Yeah, it's something so culturally intertwined that it's not uh, It's not like uh, finding an engineer who understands, because engineer is a very global concept, but tea is a very mm. built-in, uh, especially Chinese tea terms. Mm. Cindy says, great summary, very understandable. Oh, awesome. thank you. Thank you again, Cindy, thank for that. Thank you for the feedback. That's what I need to know. All right, guys, uh, that wraps up this week's Sunday Tea Book. Thank you guys so much for your awesome participation. Um, all your questions, your comments, your, your letting us know when we get it right, letting us know when you need more information. We love it all. Very uh, helpful for us. Really love the questions. We love the feedback. We love this time that we mm -hmm. spend here with you guys. Uh, what's coming up? Let's tell them what's coming up. Next week is episode 28 of Sunday Tea Book. Uh, we've got the schedule uh, up on YouTube now, so you can click that notification bell for the next few all the way out to February, I think. Um, so check those out and um, stay tuned for our January schedule, which will be coming soon on our website. Um, follow us on our social media to, to stay in touch with that when that happens. And, uh, oh no, I didn't put the cool new music on the outro. So you'll get to have oh, both today. Okay. Um, but uh, I, was, I think that's it. Anything else we need to say? Give us a thumbs up, guys, if you like the content of the oh, video. Right, right, right. really helps thumbs the channel up. out. If you're not subscribed, uh, you, can, you know where the subscribe button is. Give it a click. And until next time, guys, keep, keep steeping. Keep steeping. Ah.